Okay, what I'm doing today, someone had asked about the <clears throat> my previous video where I did a skyline and I was using a cardboard stamp and they said they weren't sure what I did with um, how I did it. Well, I don't, I'll put the link to that video below. That'll show you how to print this, but right now I'm going to show you how I go about doing a, uh, it's, it's basically a collagraph, how I go about doing a collagraph stamp that I will use on my gel plate or I will use on, to just hand print. I've got this photo, and we're going to do it from a photo. This is uh, one of my relative's houses in New England, and I love it. It's a nice, simple little country house. And first thing I did was decide how big I want the picture. And I'm going to want to cut out the street, but I want to make these trees in the background, I want to actually make a shape of those trees in the background. So I have a ton of these that I cut out. I cut out little um, mats so that I can see what I want to do with my pictures. And this one I had to put a little bit, an, another one inch on the side to get this picture. But this is basically what I'm going to do here, right there. And we're going to cut this out of cereal box cardboard. I guess this is cereal box, yes, right there, Frosted Flakes, the cheap kind, because I'm pretty cheap. And a Frosted Flake is a Frosted Flake. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trace this on to what's going to be the backboard of the whole thing. So. I have to get this bottom evened off to where I think I'm going to want it. Uh, right about where that line is in the sidewalk. So I'm going to line this up with the edge here. And cut it down. And the rest is Now I have to figure out on the sides. I'm probably just going to cut those white strips off. I'm not going to include the car that's in the picture, but I do want more of the trees in the background. Now side to side, let's see how much I've got. Yeah, I'll just cut those white strips off. But we'll leave the top one. Now this is just going to be my, and I'll put the supply list, there's not a lot of supplies for doing this, most you find around your house, the only carbon paper is the only somewhat fancy thing to it. Now what I'm going to do is, this is going to be the baseboard, and I'm going to cut out the background. So let's cut it along the edge here. Ah, going around my fingers. All right, that's going to be the base. Sometimes I use a thicker cardboard for the base. This one, I don't think I'm going to do that. But you can always, once you're done, put it on a thicker cardboard. And I want to try and cut out nice straight lines. Alright, this top I'm going to cut a little larger because I'm going to make trees and we're going to see where we need them. This is where the tracing is going to come into effect here. And I even save these little... Um, little edges to the cardboard because actually that's what I cut my skyline out of these edges I do a lot of cardboard stuff all right so let's see what we want now and I'm gonna lay that down on there feel where the edge oh I went way up on the edge so now I'm just kind of making a tree sh type shape here. 
not really following those trees. That's going to be the top edge of our flight. I do have some smaller scissors that I work with, but since this is not too fussy, I just want it to look like trees there. Not any particular type of tree, and as you can see, I'm not really even following the lines. It's just a general idea where these trees are going to be. All right, that's your first step. Now, you could actually use that for something too, but let's put that to one side. Here's your base for this picture. Now what I'm going to need are the pieces. The trees I'm just going to leave as it is and put the house on top. So I'm going to need a piece of cardboard. And you can also use one thing I found that was fun to use. Well, see, this is one that I started with onto one of these um, box flaps with a cereal box. I haven't worked on it in a while, but that's the start of one. Okay, so I want to do this house next, so I'll take a piece of cardboard. And put down my carbon paper. And I want a basic shape of the whole outline of the house. That's what I want now. That's the whole outline, including where the stairs go down. The chimney, because we'll put another chimney on the top of this outline of the chimney and the roof. I'm not pressing down very hard. I hope I'm able to see this. All right, so that's the whole basic outline of that whole house. I actually might do the shed at the... no, no. Yeah, let's do the shed at the same time. This is actually a shed in the backyard. It kind of looks like an appendix to the house, but... It's their wood shed. Alright, so there's your basic outline. Alright, I'm going to shut down while I cut this all out. Okay, so here we have the house. Basic outline of the house. Now, I'm going to decide where it goes. That's about right, right there. Make sure it's straight. I'm going to use some... I don't have much left. I use some Mod Podge. This is the purple one that's not so sticky. And I'm going to pull some out with a straw, I think. I've got it way in the bottom there. And I'm going to really liberally coat this with Mod Podge. Especially that chimney that's sticking up there. And I'm using a straw because all my brushes are in the house. It's been cold out here and for Tex Texas 50 degrees is kind of cold. but. Right now it's in the 50s. I'm probably not going to get to print this and show you it printed because this should go out on Sunday and it's going to be cold. All right, let's do it right there. And I'm going to press it down really good and let the base dry. I'm going to clean up all this Mod Podge around because anything you do on this plate, if I put a, when you start printing, anything you do on this plate will show up. If I took a razor blade and did lines, the first couple of printings, that's going to show up until it fills in with paint. So that's why I don't worry too much about the first printing. Now, what do you need to do to this? Okay, we're going to need a roof. 
So now we're going to, and you can cut this out of different things. You can, uh, textured watercolor paper does a great job. Um, anything that's got any thickness to it, thicker than, say, um, copy paper. This, this cardstock will work. Um, whatever you want to use. I'm using the cardboard that I usually use, which is cereal boxes. Let's see if I can get the roof out of the edge of this one. Sure can. Just see what I'm doing here. And while that, that part's drying, you get to cutting other parts. I'm not going to worry about that edging on the roof, the, I guess it's gutters. Not going to worry about that at all. Oops, forgot to do the... Well, I didn't forget to do it, I just didn't have it on there. Okay. Let me line it up again, so I can find out where it ends. Always good to have the copy paper in there all the way. I just know it vaguely ends in that. Doesn't have to be exact, I just gotta know the angle. All right, so. Now you'd put in the next layer. You have to decide what the next layer, the second layer is going to be. And on mine, it's going to be the roof. And to get the definition of this peak, we're just going to leave it like this. And then I'll put a line on the bottom. So now you line it up with your work. And slight imperfections don't matter at all. Slight imperfections. I really do need to get some more glue. I was on that no buy January, which was great because I, I did a lot of stuff that I wouldn't have done because I didn't have, I had to go through the stuff I already had so I really enjoyed it. It helped. It was, it sounds like it would stifle you, but it certainly didn't. Ah, get my fingers out of it. It was a creative boost. And I don't know about you, but since I've been able to afford craft supplies, and you know, I'm not rich, but I can afford to get some now and again, I tend to buy too much. I tend to want to try everything. And the thing is, I don't try everything. A lot of it's left unused. All right. Bring that down a little. I don't like that the, see in this edge here where it comes out and it doesn't come out the same. Well, it's okay, but you can go in with an X-Acto knife and cut that piece out even though you already glued it down and just pry it up. Kind of a crickety roof, but all right. Now I would go about figuring what else would be next. I would think it would be like the windows. And what do you do? Do you do a whole window and then something over it? I'll show you the two different ways you could do it. You could cut out just the frame, just this part. Just the part I'm coloring in. You could cut just the frame out and leave the windows if you wanted. Or you could cut a whole section, cut that whole section out, and then go back and cut small pieces to put in for the panes. Which is what I've usually done before. But uh, 
I have to find my small scissors to do those, but let's just cut out the entire sections. So what we'll do is get our cardboard, find a small piece, and trace out some windows. Well, let's do a bigger piece. I have the other end of this one. Here it is. Let's use this for the rest of it. And while I'm at it, let me move this so I don't. While I'm at it, I probably will just trace a whole bunch of stuff. All right, I'm going to trace out these windows. And on this one, we'll make it just one big window. Hmm. Let's trace out the door, which you don't see all of, but I'm going to put the whole door. There's a railing there, which we'll put in later. And it goes right to the edge of the cardboard. All right. And I'll just do one of these windows. I just want you want to give you the general idea. How you do this layer by layer. Now four layers is about as far as I go because I haven't found it as effective after four layers as it to be worth the trouble. All right and you have to figure out on your picture where that goes right about there. I'm making this a little bit bigger than I drew it because I don't want that that little lump there. Though if it were planned, it would make a lovely window, so. But unfortunately, this is the door. Oh, well, the door is up there. And then the other little window, which I should have probably done window and shutters together, but. And it's stuck in my sweater. Okay, let's cut that bottom off. Made the window a little bit bigger. And that goes over here. Now, what would I do for right here? I'm probably going to do a piece of cardboard. that on top. The reason why I picked this project is cutting the straight lines is much easier than other kinds of projects. Now I would glue that on top of there. And it's not going to be really raised but just slightly raised so you get the effect. Let's squiggle it around till it fits. There you go. Get rid of excess glue when you're doing this. Now I'm not being real precise on placement. I know about where this stuff goes. I actually did a painting of this house, so I'm very familiar with this house. 
You're never so familiar with something as when you've sat down and painted the whole thing. Now I'm going to wait on the door because I have to do that railing and I have to decide where that's going to go. This is the bedroom window, which is right there. Put that into place. And this is basically a collagraph plate is what it is. I keep calling it a stamper, but it's basically a collagraph plate. All right, now I'm going to show you how you do that window. Now the door, I'm going to leave the door up there because we don't want to do that yet. Now to do the window, you would just do tiny squares, which is a pain, but especially this one over here. Still move it a little. Ah. Because those side edges. Ah, I lost my pencil. I'm sure it's right here, but I don't know where it is. Okay. I use a bigger piece. That's too annoying to try and find out where the. It's not like I don't have plenty of this. And on the side windows, I'm just going to cut out the entire large rectangle and just leave it at that. Gonna do a glue as you go thing. Now I've done these successfully with those um, purple glue sticks. Doesn't sound like they should work, but they do. I'm a very messy gluer, I have to admit. I'm surprised all the time that they don't find me dead out here with my head glued to the table. Just surprised. Now, I'm going to get it kind of where I want. I want to get that excess glue up, though. Use a dry tissue here. It'll still be movable once I get the excess glue up. All right, now move it into final position. Right there looks good. Line up the windows so that they've got sill around them. And there, as you can see, now I could put a little line, I could take this little tiny piece and put a little line between them if I wanted, but that's not what I'm gonna do. But on this one over here, since the only thing in it is, well, I suppose I could. Put panes on that too. I guess for continuity sake, we should. So I'm going to put panes on this. I'm going to put the door in and then I'm going to come back and show you my progress. 
Okay, so at this point I've got all the windows in, the door, I put an inset in the door. I didn't actually copy exactly the way it looks, but I cut some strips for the stairs. And I'm going to put like a little stoop right there, which there isn't one there, but I think it would look more balanced if I did that. So I'm going to put a stoop right there kind of under the door. And for the steps, I just cut strips the right length. And I'm just going to gently lay them down. Trying to get it to stick. With just a little bit of a line in between them. To give you the idea of their steps. Now the last one's going to be down lower onto the base cardboard. Uh, well, swish that around. Basically, I'm just giving you an idea that there's steps there. Now we're going to put two railings on. from the building. I guess I could trace them, but then again, I can figure this out without tracing them. I need two about like that. And you can be more precise. You can use the drawing every time. I don't like to. I like it to be more, I don't know, folk artish, I guess. It's, it's more my style on this kind of thing. I'm just laying down a little bit of glow. And these would tilt slightly to the right. Oops, I don't want to move the stairs. That's why it's important to let one thing dry before you do another, but I'm just trying to show you how to do this. For that person who didn't understand. All right, now I would let that dry totally. And then I would come down and put a base on it. that had the downward poles from the from the railing. I might make them a little bit small. Let's tilt those just a little bit more. There you go. Yeah, that gives you more the idea of these railings coming off the house. And then after all that dries, because I'm not making a mess, I'm going to uh, put poles going this way. As you can see in the thing how the railings come out to a slant and then straight up and down poles. Can you see that? That's what I'm doing. But anyways, I'm going to leave it right here and let it dry before I mess with it anymore. Now there's other things you can do. You can come along and put like the bottom on here. That would be nice. Um, you could put actual trees in there if you wanted to cardboard trees on top. Matter of fact, I'll show you how to do that. I would take this. i to find me some cardboard. And just say I wanted some trees along the top of it here, right here. I would just trace out the line of the house. And I could make just some trees coming in and coming into the side of the house. Just 
Just some rough tree shapes to give a little dimension to that. That background. I don't usually do that, but. All right. So let's see, I would want to. And you could glue that there. And that would give you a second dimension of trees in the background. Let's put that down. And I know some people say you're supposed to glue the both sides. And I do if I'm doing a collage. But this is going to be mashed down and printed. And it never, can, it never comes up on me anyways. Just doing one layer. Like I said, I've actually done these with a purple glue stick because at the time it was all I had and I was working in the house. When it's cold or very, very hot, I have to have a lot of stuff I can do in the house because this studio, while it does have a heater, you should be able to hear the heater. It's very quiet. Um, and it does have an air conditioner. It's a window unit and the studio itself is only partially um, insulated so all right that's what you would do like I said I just have to come back and put the downward thing but that has to dry before I can do that that is how you make them can you see the dimensions in it let me come down and show you and you can do these lots of different ways I mean you can cut into the background cardboard like I did on this one what I did was I cut into the background cardboard. This is the just the same cardboard, the top part of it. And then I cut little buttons out with my hand cutter and put those over that. I mean, and you can glue just about anything to the cardboard. I think these were store-bought um, flowers. I don't know what they were made out of, but... And this one is another one that I've done with lots of dimension. This is... Um, just box cardboard with uh, other pieces of cardboard cut and then some of it's layered on top and I'll put a link to the video where I uh, printed the skyline in case you didn't see it to show you what you do with these when they're done and when you print it you would print it on your gel plate pull it up and then you would put your frame where you have printed over where you have printed. In this case, the frame, I might have to take that end off the frame. But you would put your frame over the printed surface of your gel plate and then pull it up and you'd have a nice picture with a nice border. That's the way you do these. And this is really a collagraph board. You can, when you're done with this, you can seal it with acrylic medium or um, any kind of varnish you could use. And uh, it makes it a little slicker. It will print a little differently. I don't do that because acrylic medium is just the same binder you get in acrylic paints. And by the third time I have printed this, the first time it comes out nice and sharp. And it, it gets a little bit duller as you print. But by the third time I have printed it, it's, got, it's sealed totally with acrylic paint. I don't have to worry about it. So. Anyway, that's how you do these. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, maybe I'll do one with, with printing this later on, but right now I have to get inside. It's cold out here. Thank you very much for viewing my video. Put a like if you like it, please. That helps my, I love that word, algorithms. Um, subscribe if you want to see more. They usually come out on early Wednesday no by Wednesday noon and Sunday noon. I do try to have them out by then. But you have a very lovely day.
Okay, so we're going to do a test print of this. I've got it down on black. I picked up as much of the surrounding area as I could so I don't make a mess here. Just pulling up the excess from around it. All right, now I've pressed it down really good. Now the house itself is slightly crooked, which is okay. Now I'm going to take that frame. I took the extra piece of it out. We're going to As you can see, the house is slightly crooked. But that's because I was in a hurry. Never be in a hurry. That's what happens. Um, now the frame should be the same size as your paper, and it's about the same size. It's off by maybe a hair. I'm going to line it up. Really press down. Down, 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 down. I'm giving it lots of pressure. Like I said, it is slightly crooked, the house. Oh, I'm sticking on paper. It's sticking on that tape. Ah, and it ripped. But as you can see, you can get nice detail from it. Can you see the house? The, the base is one level, which is back here. You can see where it's, where the, um, the jagged cut to the top of the base is. I'll lay this down here so you can see them both together. Can you see that right there, the jaggedness? Um, I should put a line in there to make that look like it, like that shed looks like a shed. I'd go back and do that if I were doing anything with it. But this has got a lot of crooked stuff to it, so I'm not even going to bother going back. But can you see how you can see the railings and the windows? This is. Uh, base layer of the window and then the panes are another layer but it looks like a frame around it the shutters are one uh, a second layer on top of the house but I'm going to pull this down so you can see the detail can you see that see the detail you can get the railings the door and you can do other things too. You can take your exacto knife and do slits. Now the only to to make like a diamond shapes in your windows or your roof shingles, but as if you do those slits, they'll only show up for the first five or six times. As you're printing, um, those will get filled in with um, paint, and they won't print as well over time. So. This is just the basic idea for you. Do what you're doing. Don't do it in a hurry and end up with crooked windows and stuff. I was trying to get this done before because tomorrow is supposed to get real cold and I have to get anything I need to do in the studio done today. Um, but you can see how to do this. You can see the layers. And like I said, you and you can use Elmer's glue. You don't need to use Mod Podge. Just basic cardboard Elmer's glue and you can make a collagraph plate. You can use cardboard, you can use paper, but it has to be at least as thick as cardstock to actually make a raised difference. Um, you can use cloth, you can use whatever. Uh, you can use sandpaper, but if you're going to do it on a gel plate, make sure you coat that sandpaper a couple times with the um, gel medium, something thick to coat it, because you don't want to press the sandpaper down onto your gel plate. So try not using sandpaper but you can use lots of different things um, burlap makes a beautiful design I've done a house before I don't have any of the prints left they all sold but I did done a house before with burlap as the um, roof and that really looked nice so you can do lots of things thank you very much for viewing my video I hope you got some ideas out of it that's the whole point and that the lady who didn't understand what I was doing when I did the skyline I hope this shows you what you need to do Thank you very much. 
You have a lovely day.